What else I wanted to ask you about? So you had a quote, uh, you tell your clients ABW to always be writing. Uh, that if you have to write 10 books before you land an agent or a deal, then do it. The only difference between published and unpublished author is persistence. So that led me to wonder, uh, how many books can I write in a year and be said to always be to, to, to be following that ABW? Depends. I mean, you can write one book. You can write no books as long as you're always writing. I mean, whether it's short stories or novels or poems um i mean if you're writing you're doing your job and i say that a lot because if i submit a book to an editor the editor may say this book isn't for me but send me the next thing what else do they have and i want to be able to say here's what they have as opposed to well they could have another book in two years you know i want to be able to tell them about something Gotcha. And even if all I've got for you is, um, I don't know, a, a proposal with maybe a sample chapter, is that enough for you to say to the editor, this is definitely come, maybe sort of coming soon? Yes. If you're a published author, I can do that. So for Diana Rodriguez Wallach, now that she's a, she's a published author, I can send her editor a couple chapters and a synopsis as a proposal, and they can buy off that. If she weren't with those editors, I'd have a lot, it'd be more difficult to sell on proposal. And when I try to sell on proposal, you know, they always say, oh, when's the full coming? So I like to go out, and I think most agents do, with a full manuscript. Makes our jobs a lot easier, makes it a lot easier for the editors, and all that good jazz. So even if somebody's got the perfect horror uh, idea in their mind, they're like, this is going to be perfect for Lane Haymont until they've got the full manuscript if they're an unpublished author, don't bother with the query, right? Yeah, don't bother with it. It's just going to annoy the hell out of me because I'm going to be like, oh, I love this premise. I want to read it. And then there's only 30 pages. And I'm like, I, I can't sell 30 pages. I mean, if you're Stephen King, I can sell two pages. I can sell a paragraph. But, you know you're unpublished, yet proven, I can't sell you. I think if Stevie King just has a, a, a dream about a story, he wakes up to another million dollars in his bank account. <laughs> There's this funny scene, I think it's Family Guy, where it's one of those cutaways, and it's Stephen King pitching a book to a publisher, and he's saying, oh, look, a lamp monster, arr, arr. and the guy's like, have it to me in the, on my desk next week. I think there's another family cutaway where he, he you know, he, tasteless as always uh, on Family Guy. He gets hit by the car, and as he's in the air, he types another novel before he lands. <laughs> yeah, but he lands. He's like done. <laughs> I think for all I know, that might be true. <laughs> I think it was The Shining. Maybe he wrote no, because The Shining was in the seventies. Oh, maybe it was Misery. I don't remember. Uh, that he wrote... Um... Oh, after he got hit by a car. He was oh. hit by a car and was laid up for however long. And I think that's when he wrote Misery. Yeah, I'm not sure. I know he wrote... He got in a hurry to finish the Dark Tower series right after that. And oh, okay. now well, I'm annoyed cool. because, of course, he's living well, well into uh, his golden years. And, man, if you had just slowed down, you probably could have done a little bit better with my favorite fantasy series that sort of derailed itself when you rushed through to the ending. <laughs> yeah. You know, sometimes it happens. <laughs> I understand the sentiment, not wanting to, to leave it unfinished. But I wish that he had just like, okay, well, there's definitely an ending. And if I die, they'll find it. But maybe I'm just going to put it on the shelf for, for a decade and then revisit it and see if I still want uh, my my big bad Walter O'Dim to just be eaten by a baby. Maybe, maybe the man in black gets a better exit than that. Spoilers. <laughs> I think maybe people don't want to be a Herman Melville, you know, where you die unnamed they misspell your name in the obituary, which I think is actually a myth. And then you're not famous until 100 years later. 
Well, I assume that's what's going to happen to me. I assume the moment I'm dead, every every book that I've ever written will become famous beyond my my wildest dreams. And if not, I would. <laughs> Either way, here's <laughs> hoping. <laughs> if there is an afterlife, I'm not wasting it looking back on Earth and like, are they reading my books? Like, no, nah, let, me, let me go on and find something else to do. <laughs> true that, true but that. I just had an all new experience. I got to write a new book about this. You'll read it when you get here. <laughs> right? There you go.